Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Jax and in this video I'll be showing you guys my unboxing and review of the M106K pen tablet from Gaumon. So just a disclaimer, all the costs of the product and shipping were covered by the lovely folks over at Gaumon who asked me to do a product review, uh, but everything I say about the tablet will be my own honest thoughts and opinions. So let's get started. The box the tablet comes in is very simple, clean and professional looking, which I like. It's always promising to see when companies put that extra bit of effort and just gives their products a high quality kind of feel. Opening Lilith and we come straight to the tablet. On top there's a little card with instructions or where to download the drivers and manuals and such, will be help, which will be helpful with installation a little later on. Now the tablet itself can be easily lifted from the box using this little tab right here which I'm assuming also serves as a pen holder. Tablet has a decent weight, just the right amount I think to feel sturdy and durable, but also light enough to be portable. The surface of the screen is smooth and matte, and the rest of the tablet surface has a nice, slightly textured feel to it, which I think is quite common across a lot of other tablet models. One thing I was quite intrigued by were these numbers at the top of the screen, which are apparently called soft keys. I think they work like express keys where you can customize them to coordinate with whatever shortcuts that you want. And speaking of express keys, this tablet also comes with a whopping 12 express keys, all of them arranged to the left of the screen in these two columns here. Setting the tablet aside in the rest of the box, we have the stylus individually wrapped. Similar to the tablet, it's made of a nice matte black plastic, but the part where you grip it has this slightly soft rubbery feel. The pen comes in a protective cap, which you obviously need to unscrew before you use it, and when you do, you get a nice pointy tip right here. Next up, we have this cute little pouch, quite a thick material with a Velcro-like kind of feel. You have the Gaumon logo at the back and a button clasp at the front where it opens. Inside, you'll find four extra replacement pen nibs, which you can insert into your pen when the current one has warmed down. And also this circular silver thing, which I think is supposed to help you do that. If you need any instructions on how to, there's a helpful instruction booklet inside explaining everything, what everything in the box does. Finally, on the left side we have another container, and this one holds all the cables you need to connect the tablet to the computer. This tablet uses a USB port, so make sure you have one of those. And also we have another cable, and this one is for charging your stylus. Yes, the pen does need to be charged before you use it, but I remember reading on the site that once it's fully charged, the pen has like over 300 hours of non-stop use, so you don't need to worry about it running out of power for quite a while after um, its first charge. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that's in the box. I've cleared up my desk now, and I'm just going to do a couple of quick size comparisons. I have my own pen tablet, a medium intravenous art from Wacom, which I purchased about two years ago. The pen I'm showing you on the left here is the Intuos pen. As you can see, the stylus from Gaumon is quite a bit thicker and rounder. But both fit quite comfortably in the hand, so your preference for thicker or thinner pens is completely up to you. I'm also going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the Intuos art with the Gaumon tablet. And this isn't exactly supposed to be a fair comparison because they're quite different products. If I were to give a Wacom equivalent of the Gaumon tablet, it will probably be the Intuos Pro which has a size and appearance quite a bit more similar. But anyway, since we're comparing tablets, I also have my 13-inch Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And as you can see, size-wise, they're pretty similar, except of course, being a display tablet, the Mobile Studio is quite a lot thicker and heavier. So now, onto the review. I went ahead and downloaded the drivers from the website, which was remarkably easy to do. The company doesn't have that many different products yet, so finding the right driver for the tablet was pretty simple. Today I'll be using the tablet to finish this drawing of my OC Iluima. I've drawn him on this channel before, he's kind of like this sparkly space deer thing that I've had for ages. Anyway, I did a sketch with the tablet as well, but the recording for that broke, so I can't actually show you guys that. But we're just going to um, jump straight into colouring. Right now, the tablet is on its default settings. I didn't mess around with it too much. Once it's plugged in, it pretty much calibrates itself to the resolution of your screen. One thing that I did notice with the tablet was that there was no mouse mode. The tablet is automatically set in pen mode, which basically means that the area on the tablet corresponds to the area of the screen. So say if you move your pen to the top corner of the tablet, the mouse or brush also moves to the top corner of the screen. 
For me, this was a bit jarring because I've always used my pen tablets in mouse mode, which doesn't have that one-to-one -one correspondence. And this isn't a huge problem, honestly. I got used to it pretty quickly. It's just a thing to be aware of, especially if you're like me and you used to use a Wacom tablet. Um, those usually came with the mouse mode option. Okay, so usually I start by laying down some of the base colours of the character. At this stage, the tablet was working pretty well, it was pretty functional. Um, as you can see, the colours are going down quite nicely. I did like that as soon as I started using it, the speed felt really good, like really natural. I like the surface of the tablet, it has a bit of friction, a bit of drag, which gives it the natural feel like when you're drawing onto paper. And I don't know about you guys, but I find that haptic feedback really important when drawing. It sort of helps bridge that disconnect between your hand and the screen that you can often get with pen tablets. I did find that when I first started using it with Medibane, there were a few lagging issues. But those seemed to eventually sort themselves out the more I got into the painting. It seems to be the case with most tablets, there are always some bugs when you first start, but then somehow over time they just kind of fix themselves, or maybe just stop noticing or adapt or something. So I'm going to kick this drawing into time lapse now, I'll be back once I've finished a bit more. some progress. I just put in some shadows and colours and I merged all the layers and now we're onto the painting. I'm actually quite liking how this is turning out actually. I really didn't know where it would be going at the start. I never used to use orange shadows with this character before, uh, which is odd because I usually love going for those complementary colour schemes. It never really worked out before but today apparently it is so we'll keep going at it. At one point I did get some issues with the uh, pressure sensitivity. Like sometimes it would just disappear and I couldn't figure out why, if it was the program or the tablet driver. If that happens, usually the best thing to do is to restart everything. Give your computer and the new drivers a chance to mingle and calibrate and that will usually do the trick. One thing that I did forget to mention, you do have the options to customise all the express keys at the side and at the top of your tablet here. So like you can set one to Control Z for undo, redo, zoom in, zoom out, colour picking, etc. And this is great if you don't have a keyboard close by or if you have some really complicated shortcuts that are too annoying to do on a keyboard all the time. These can really streamline your drawing process, but since I'm using the keyboard, I didn't end up using any of these express keys throughout the drawing. And it's like, there's so many of them. Like honestly, I wouldn't be able to remember which one's which unless I actually stuck labels on each of them. So once the pen pressure thing resolved itself, as you can see, the drawing process was very, very smooth. The brushes and colours were all laying on by themselves and really, really nicely, just like any other tablet would. Okay, so overall, what did I think of this tablet? I think I'll give this tablet a solid B+. It had a few issues with calibrating with my program and some pen pressure bugs, but for a cheap $50 to $80 tablet, it has all the things a tablet needs to have. It will do the job perfectly fine and it's perfectly functional. I know for a lot of artists who are students or are young and have no money, I think this is a pretty good budget choice to go with. There's a link down below in the description to my blog post if you want a clear written out review for the tablet. And also some additional links to the Kaomon website and places where you can um, purchase it. So a huge thank you to the folks over at Gaomon um, for sending me this tablet to review. I really wasn't expecting it since I'm still such a uh, tiny YouTube channel. This offer was indeed very uh, validating. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching and as always I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you all soon. So bye!